Hi, I am Dr. Sakya Mansoor from my channel Learning Anatomy and uh, today I will discuss with you the shoulder dislocation, its types and the axillary nerve injury and the association of the dislocation and the prevention and its treatment. So here you could see this is the shoulder giant dislocated position, right? Here this, you could see this. And uh, like this is the glenoid fossa, the glenoid cavity. And this is the dislocated head of the humerus going inferior. So let's talk in detail in a systematic manner. So the uniquely wide range of movement of the shoulder joint is achieved at the cost of stability. The head of the humerus is held in shallow glenoid socket by Glenoid labrum, glenohumeral ligaments, cracohumeral ligament, overhanging canopy of cracoacromial arch, and surrounding muscles. Failure of any these mechanisms can result in instability of joint. And here you could see all these uh, things which I showed to you already. Uh, this is the glenoid labrum. First of all, is a very strong uh, support uh, to the shoulder giant. Uh, so you can resort to my first uh, video on the shoulder joint uh, normal anatomy in detail. This is attached to the margins of the glenoid fossa, the glenoid cavity. And uh, here you could see the various ligaments and uh, support the canopy of the uh, cracochromial arch. This is the cracochromial arch. This is the, you know, cotocoid process. This is the chromion and this is the cracochromial ligament. So this three form, these three, the cracochromial arch. Then the supporting thing, this is the glenohumeral ligaments, these glenohumeral, um, the superior, middle and inferior ones. And uh, then the this cracohumeral ligament. These are the supports. And of course, I uh, told you the surrounding muscles. I'm not showing you. And uh, right now, I've shown you already in my previous video. These were the more particularly rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis and tedious minor. So dislocation is defined as complete separation of the glenohumeral surfaces, while subluxi subluxation means symptomatic separation of the surfaces without dislocation. So the shoulder giant is the most mobile and unstable. I told you already, it is usually displaced by direct or indirect injury. And uh, about 90% of the shoulder dislocations take place in an anterior or antero-inferior direction, right? So posterior dislocation is very rare, only 5% or so. Why dislocation mostly inferior? So what are the causative factors? First of all, that uh, the cracoacromial arch and the rotator cuff, they are effective in preventing upward dislocation of course these are present in upward and uh, so they prevent upward dislocation here you could see again here you could see this is a cracochromial arch and it does not allow this head of the humerus to displace superiorly and uh, the third factor is very important that the capsule of the shoulder joint is very weak in an inferior direction so clinically these locations are called anterior or more rarely posterior dislocations indicating whether the humeral head has descended anterior or posterior to the infraglenoid tubercle and long head of the triceps the head then is placed anterior to or posterior to the glenoid cavity so this is uh, the continuation of the anterior dislocation of the shoulder joint and here you could see a child uh, with this position which is most vulnerable to this uh, dislocation about 90 percent i told you already dislocations take place in an anterior or anterior inferior direction they are the most common in adolescents and young adults often as athletic injuries right so excessive abduction, here you could see, this is excessive abduction, and then the extension and the lateral rotation, right? The combination of these movements of the arm at the shoulder, uh, for example, this throwing motion play, takes place, it, it places and puts stress on the capsule and interior elements of the rotator cuff, which is a subscapularis tendon. 
so let's uh, discuss its types uh, first of all is the sub coracoid which is the commonest and the second is the sub glenoid and third one is the sub clavicular this is very rare so sub coracoid dislocation uh, first of all i will discuss the commonest and uh, during abduction extension and lateral rotation this position again you see this uh, the acromion has acted as a fulcrum the powerful flexors and adductors of the shoulder joint now usually pull the humeral head forward and upward into sub coracoid sub coracoid position here you could see sub coracoid position yes this is the coracoid process this is shoulder joint this is coracoid process and uh, you could see this is the our head of the humerus right glenohumeral giant and this is the sub coracoid dislocation he's going below the coracoid process its example is a backstroke swimmer colliding with the end of the pool in it it's a sub coracoid dislocation is very common to occur so what to do the position of the arm persons cannot use the arm and usually supports it with the other hand this is the subglenoid dislocation the head of the humerus going below and um, below the uh, this glenoid cavity you could see this is a radiograph of the subcoracoid dislocation right so you, this is a chromion this is head of the humerus this is a glenoid cavity and here this is the subcoracoid dislocation of the shoulder joint so the nerve uh, related with the we know same that uh, the humerus has three nerves related with that and uh, first of all here i will discuss with the axillary nerve and the axillary nerve injury its repercussions what is the position of the shoulder and what is the uh, sensory uh, uh, loss uh, over here axillary nerve is in close relation to the inferior part of the joint capsule and can be injured when the shoulder dislocates for this is called a traction type of injury so subclenoid displacement of the head of the humerus into the quadrangular space damages axillary nerve I showed you already this subclenoid displacement here you could see again here this is the subclenoid dislocation right this is the glenoid fossa head of the humerus so what would be the axillary nerve injury deficits motor paralysis of the deltoid inability to abduct the shoulder and the sensory loss would be loss of sensation in a small area of the skin that covers the central part of the deltoid this is called as the regimental batch loss right so inferior displacement of the humerus can also stretch and damage the radial nerve and or musculocutaneous nerve Here you could see the axillary nerve injury and the position of the patient and the motor loss resulting in this flattened shoulders very important deltoid is lost and the rounded contour of the shoulder is lost so shoulder gets flattened so that uh, due to the atrophy of the deltoid muscle the acromion is prominent because the axillary nerve uh, splice the uh, this deltoid so this is a thing so this is a also the humeral head would be prominent right and their arm would be held in slight abduction and the elbow would be flexed right and forearm would be internally rotated supported by the other hand here you could see this is the other hand showing and uh, this is the regimental batch area sensory loss over here due to the axillary nerve injury that uh, right so this is a sensory loss in the axillary nerve injury this shaded area shows it when you prick it test it this should be felt no sensation over here this is anesthesia here so let's uh, now discuss association of the dislocation associated with uh, labral tears if age of the person is less than 40 years and rotator cuff tears if age is greater than 40 years when associated with fractures of the tuberosity of the glenoid rim right so this is called as the bony bank cord, right the association of the dislocation with tuberosity of the glenoid rim fact fracture so this is uh, called as the bony band cord right the posterior dislocations are associated with seizures right 
because it's difficult to uh, occur. So strong blow is needed. It is provided by seizures or even electrocution. Humeral head impression fractures or hill sex uh, lesion, they can also occur, right? So the treatment of dislocation, reduction of dislocation, Hippocratic method or kosher method are used. Hippocratic method by mild traction on the hand, which is met by a counter force shielded by a bare foot in the patient's axilla. Kosher method, the operator grips and pulls on humeral epicondyles externally Rotated arm is first adducted across the body and then internally rotated. Damage to the axillary nerve is checked before and after reduction. So immo immobilization sling used for two weeks and then the physical therapy is employed. Very important. So how this is prevented? Prevention or prevention of re dislocation. So that uh, once is occurred and treated, so it might uh, re-dislocate. So we have to prevent it and the surgical procedures are used. These are carried out to prevent uh, re-dislocation. And they involve repair of the torn labrum and uh, the rearrangement of anterior muscles and the reinforcement of capsule by an overlapping repair. I thank you very much for listening to this uh, uh, short topic. And uh, I will carry on uh, with the next topic on the rotator cuff injuries, which will be very, very important, the impingement syndrome. Thank you very much.